Hey everyone and welcome to Motion Tutorials where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, visual effects, and 3D animation. I am your host Sean Frangel and this week we're talking all about the new updates for After Effects CC 2015. So it is June 2015 and the new Adobe Creative Cloud update just came out. So if you're looking for the updates, you can find it in the Creative Cloud updater right here. And I want to get into my top five features of After Effects because there's some really fun stuff that will really help how you work and some cool new tools to mess around with and some other little smaller stuff that's just neat to talk about. So let's get right into it. Number one, uninterrupted preview. So this new update is all about this preview window here and how playback works. So what I got here is just a basic little shape layer. And let's say we were doing some animation on it. I'll do some quick keyframes on position and scale. And let's go ahead one second. And let's say it moves over here and kind of goes on a path and gets bigger, right? So we got a basic little animation. Now, normally if we press zero to RAM preview, It'll hold up for a second and play, and that's a little different now. You can see on this preview window that there's only one shortcut and some different settings and things. And what this is all about is if I press zero or the space bar to play, it's gonna play through. And now if I make changes, it's gonna keep playing. So say I wanna add motion blur in, it's going to, if we look up here, it'll play it at as high of a frame rate as it can until it catches up and then play it at real time. So rather than RAM previewing everything, it's going to do as much as it can and let you keep playing back while you make changes. And this can be really useful for things like adding effects and changing curves. So let's do a little bit of work. We got it playing, it's going real time. I'll do ease in. It's gonna keep playing and update that. And then if I wanted to add some more curves to this, if I go to my motion curves, I can grab this and pull these and it's gonna keep playing and let me work through that. And this can be really useful if you're auditioning different effects and speed of curves and things where you want to see a really quick update and make some quick changes. So we can just keep tweaking this. And this goes for effects too. So it's still playing. Let's say I want to add a glow or something on this. I'll add a glow. And again, it's going to cache it and keep playing it. So I'll add this, make some changes, maybe duplicate this glow with Command D. We'll get a second brighter one. And you can see it's updating it as much as it can on the fly while I'm changing this without pausing. And I'll just go back to my regular thing and now we can see it's caught up and we'll eventually get to real time up here. And one little test I like to do is throw a difficult effect at it, like camera lens blur. This is a lot of processing and see how it handles that. So we can see it slows down, it's getting there, but we can still add this on and see what it looks like at partial frame rate as it's catching up and keep making changes. And this is huge. It's really good for working quickly and A, being some different options. And just to make a point of what this is and how it differs from previous versions, I have a similar project open over here in After Effects 2014. So let's say we do the same thing. We add a position and scale keyframe, move ahead, update it, turn on motion blur and play. Now, if I try to do anything, it stops. And that's kind of how After Effects has always been. So I'll add a glow. Then I got a RAM preview again with zero and I add my eases. And again, this is just the workflow that we've all been used to. So especially for things like this, where we'd have to RAM preview, watch it, make an adjustment over in the new one in 2015, this is a lot better and can really smooth along workflow. So cool stuff. Definitely probably the biggest feature for workflow in the new version, which is why it's number one on my list. And if you only watch one or two of these, like most people on YouTube, at least you'll get this one. All right, let's keep moving along. Number two, face tracking. So what I got over here in this other comp is this quick little video of me looking around in different directions and kind of quickly moving my head. So if you didn't know what I look like, this is what it is. We're at about video number 80 on my channel. I think this is the first time I've actually been on camera. So that's me darting around and I was trying to do what I could to kind of trick it and see how it would go. So what we can do now is track faces and facial features for things like color correction, but also compositing and effects. So how that works is on this footage, I'm just going to get a circle and I'm just going to draw a mask around roughly where my face is. And then I'll move that mostly where I am go down to masks and I'll right click and now I can track mask and that's going to pop open my tracker window with two new methods. We have face tracking outline and face tracking detailed. So let's go to outline first. So I'll click that and I have a little bit of this footage isolated just so we can kind of 
see how it does. Now I'll back this up a little bit just to get a little more in frame. And then I'll track forward till the end and it's gonna redo that mass so it fits correctly. And then I'll go back to that main frame and I'll just track backwards and it's gonna track backwards to my in and out point. Okay, so that's done and you can see that it roughly drew a mask pretty accurately around my face even though I'm darting around in the frame. So what we can do if we're just doing the outline is rather than just mask this off because that seems kind of silly and it's kind of creeping me out, I can add some effects if we just want to tone things up or down just on the face so if we kind of want to relight things. So let's say we add curves to this. I'll just pull the contrast down a bit. Now I can go down to effects, curves, compositing options, which was new to 2014. And I'll press plus. And now this effect is only going to apply to this mask. And then I can just feather this mask out a bit. And now if we turn this on and off, you can see this color correction is applied only to my face and it'll track along. So that's pretty cool. It's a good way to kind of relight and redo some lighting and effects, specifically only on faces without really having to get into too complicated of tracking. So let's delete all that and talk about the other option. So now if I, again, just go to a main frame where I'm looking right at the camera, get an ellipse, draw another mask on my face, right click, track mask, and I change method to face tracking detailed features. This is gonna pop open some additional options and do a lot more work. So one thing we wanna do with setting this up is we wanna find a frame like this one where things aren't moving and we can set a rest post. I'll do that and that's gonna use that as our baseline of where things aren't moving. And then same thing, I can track forward and now you can see it pops up a lot of little trackers on all sorts of things like my nose, eyebrows, mouth, and all of your facial features so it can calculate all of these things. And this is really useful data if I just go back in here and then I'll track backwards because we can apply all sorts of stuff to this without having to go in and do point trackers on things like your pupils or your eyeballs. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So let's just let that run. All right, and now we got a decent amount of this tracked. And this mask was just to get the face tracking set up. So we can go to this mask and just do none because we don't need it to mask anything. We're just using it for tracking. And now if we look in our effects, it has all of these XY position trackers set up automatically just from clicking track mask and using these face detection features. So this is cool. You can use this for things like compositing or some animation. One quick little example. In this finished comp, I got these little circles, so I'll just copy and paste those in. And these are just two little shape layers of circles, no big deal. But I'll put these kind of where my eyes are, maybe I have some weird goofy shape layer glasses or something. What we can do is go to our mass tracker and either down here in the layer stack or on effects if I lock this, we can copy or paste or link with expressions these layers to these trackers. So if I go to left eye shape layer right here, I'll option click for expressions, drag this up to left eye pupil, and then press enter on the number pad. Now, as I'm turning my face and even my pupil alone is moving, it's gonna track that shape. And if I wanted to offset it a little, I could just get the anchor point and just move it. And this section is pretty cool when my face isn't moving, or turning, but my eye is, you can see how accurately it's tracking my pupil, and that's pretty cool. And then we could do the same thing with our other eye. We'll just option click, drag it up to right eye pupil, press enter. And now if I ram preview this, one, you can see how quick it's going, and two, look how cool that is. It's following not only my face, but as my pupils are moving left and right. Look at that little move. And this would be really cumbersome to do in previous versions of After Effects, especially on something like your pupil movement, and now it's much easier with the face tracker. So pretty cool new feature. Let's keep moving along. We got expression information. So speaking of expressions on this, we link some things, and sometimes you make errors with expressions, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to dig through and figure out where they are. So let's go back to this other comp. We got this basic little animation. Say we add some expressions to this. So on position, I'll just option click, I'll type a basic wiggle expression. I'll do wiggle once a second, comma 25. 
And if you want to learn more about expressions, you can check out my top five expressions video where I get into all sorts of expressions they can do in After Effects, as well as my other video on some advanced stuff with expression sliders and effects and all sorts of stuff you can do. But just to point out how this works, let's just do a basic wiggle expression and that'll just take my keyframe information and then it'll also wiggle it this many times per second. So let's say maybe it's four and 50 units. So if I preview, it's moving on that path and then also moving along. Now, if I mess this up or made an error, let's say I use the wrong bracket, instead of just not knowing what's wrong with the expression, it's gonna point out right here, it contains an expression error and let me find it. So even if all this was closed, it's gonna pop that open if I click this little magnifying glass and scroll through if I have multiple ones and even give me this little arrow that'll tell me specifically where this is. So this is really useful, especially if you have a bunch of them. So let's say on scale, we wanted to add time. I'll do time times 200. And I'm gonna get another error because time can't be used with two properties. So now I know I have a couple errors and if I needed to find those or say I had a huge project, I can click through these, locate it with the magnifying glass and then take that out. All right, I can't use that. Go to the next one and then fix this wiggle expression and then I'm done. So this can be really useful. If I just undo that and say I had a huge project with a lot of expressions and they're all screwed up. Now it's gonna tell me exactly how many I have and let me quickly locate them. So it's really helpful if you're working with expressions if you copy and paste some assets and the expressions don't come over and you need to figure out where they are and how to fix them. All right, number four, we got some UI updates. So we already noticed that this preview window is different and the panels work a little different in After Effects 2015 and there's a few additional things you can't adjust and change. So say if I drag this into this info one and then I drag some more in, rather than that scroll bar, you can see we can use the mouse left and right and there's these little arrow things that will show the next one. So this makes it a little clearer that there's some panels hidden under here and it's just organized a, di a little differently. And one additional little UI update is that they've reworked the colors a bit. So in After Effects 2014, we changed to this black and blue look rather than the yellow for things like keyframes and numbers, but everything was kind of the same and it did get a little hard to pick up what was what. So you'll notice right away in project, we got our colors back. And with this blue and kind of how the interface works, we can adjust that even more if we go to preferences, appearance. There already was this overall brightness if you want it to look like it's more from the 90s, you can go brighter. But you also can adjust this highlight color, which if I just click default, this is our default. Now if I change this, you can see we can really brighten this up and it's changing these numbers and the keyframes and things like that, which is good. It makes it just a little easier to pick up on and a little more contrast. And we can even change focus indicators up and down. So then as we're moving, we get a little more contrast. So nice little UI update and tip. Number five, updated overall performance. So along with all of these updates and kind of stuff that it's hard to show, they reworked a lot of the engineering of how After Effects works, which is obviously why we get this updated preview. And things have just been rebuilt. If you start working in the new one and get all your plugins and stuff updated, you'll notice that things are a little quicker, things work a little smoother. Hopefully it fixed some crash errors and things like that, but things have just been re-engineered on the inside to work better, which is always a nice benefit. It's not something you can specifically see, but I gotta have something for five on the top five list. And it's something that's, you know, nice thing to know that's there, that isn't as fun to poke around with and show off but does make working a lot better and quicker. So there's definitely some great new features like our updated preview mode, continuous playback, our facial tracking with our googly eyes, a little experiment, as well as some other ones that I didn't get into, like a few Cineware updates, if you're using Cinema 4D, and a few little smaller ones that I didn't get into, like Adobe's new stock integration, libraries, and so much more as it says here. So definitely some cool new features worth upgrading and getting everything moved into After Effects 15 and at least poking around with it and seeing how the new features can change your workflow. And if you're looking for some additional updates, you can check out my top five Cineware 2.0 updates. That was a bigger thing in 2014, as well as some of my other tutorials on 
top tips for After Effects cameras, expressions, and all sorts of motion graphics animation tips and tutorials at the buttons up in the video. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already by clicking that link as well as checking it out in the description. Always thanks for watching. This has been Sean Prangella telling you about the top five tips for After Effects CC 2014, and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.